Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to see just how hard we can push this Hornady 147 grain ELDM with Alliance Reloader 26. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Guys, welcome back. I guess I could call this a round two, but in today's video we're going a little bit further off the reservation. We're going to do some further pressure exploration with Alliance Reloader 26. The last time we started testing with this, we were a little bit more cautious, making sure we didn't hit any pressure, since we were making the data up on the fly with our quick load reloading program. Previously, we loaded all the way to 47 grains of Alliance Reloader 26, and quick load only estimating we're hitting 53,639 feet per second. So for today's video, we're going to be using some horny brass that we're recycling from some of our factory ammo that we've shot out here on the channel, just to see what pressure and velocity information we can get. In case you're not familiar with our test platform, our test platform for today is a Generation 1 Ruger Precision Rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. It has a standard Ruger muzzle brake, a Vortex Viper PST, and Vortex Precision Match rings. The stock has also been upgraded to a Magpul PRS stock. We've changed the hand grip, but everything else is pretty much stock to the rifle. If you guys want to check the original video out, I'll put a card up so you can see it. But we'll basically give you all the information you need to know for today's testing as we go along. In our previous testing, we started at 47 grains in our Norma Brass. But one of the interesting points of information is our Norma Brass actually has a slightly lower case capacity than our Hornady Brass. So we're going to be starting just a little bit lower than what we tested before, starting at 46.8 grains. But seeing as our normal brass had a 52.9 grain of water case capacity, Hornady actually has 53.7 grains of water of case capacity. So this should lower our pressure and velocity a little bit further. Basically for today's testing, we'd previously been around somewhere around 101% fill rate. We're going to compress our charges even more today, ending up with a max fill rate of about 104% of our case capacity. So today we're going to be testing 46.8 grains of Alliance Reloader 26, going in 0.2 grain increments, going all the way to 49 grains. So our load test for today will be the Hornady 147 grain ELDM, part number 26333. For today's test, because it was handy, and because we're essentially almost just looking for pressure, we're just using some standard Hornady brass that we had from some previously fired factory ammunition. It's been annealed, full length sized, and trimmed to 1.910 inches. The primer for today's testing is a Fed 210. This particular lot of 210s hasn't performed really well for me, but pressure and velocity is what we're really looking for. Making sure we don't see any pressure signs is imperative. I didn't figure it would hurt to use up some of these primers. Our cartridge overall length is 2.870 inches. That puts us at a CBTO of 2.23 inches. When I first started doing load development with this 147 grain, the distance to the lands at that overall length was only about 35 thousandths. As many rounds we put through our rifle this chamber, somewhere in excess of 2,000, I believe, at this time. I haven't done a round count on it lately. I measured it right after we did this testing, and my current distance to the lands with this projectile is actually gone up significantly, and now we're just under 80 thousandths, basically a measured distance to the lands of 77 thousandths. So a CBTO lands of 2.307. So for today's testing, Alliance Reloader 26 is our powder. We're going to be starting at 46.8 grains and going all the way to 49 grains in 0.2 grain increments. Quick load is going to estimate our actual velocity at 46.8 grains at 2752 feet per second. And estimate we're going to finish our day off at 2889 feet per second. One thing I will mention that since these are all compressed charges, all of these were actually loaded with our Forrester drop tube funnel. I do have a video on this. But when you're working with such compressed charges, this does a marvelous job of being able to compress a lot of powder in the case without hearing a whole lot of crunch. Certainly without this, I wouldn't be pushing it near as hard as we're pushing it today. So if you're even thinking about doing using Loader 26 for this type of application, might want to think about picking one of these up. If it was available on Amazon, I'd put it in the description box below, but I think you're going to have to go to Brownells. But it is a good funnel. So without further ado, let's go to the range, see how this performs, and we'll come back and talk about our performance.
Well guys, welcome back. I'm sure you're all dying to know that our overall group size was a very non-spectacular 1.553 MOA. When we were testing this last time, we put 25 rounds into 1.7 MOA. So getting 12 rounds into 1.5 MOA, certainly not really a spectacular feat, but let's talk about the velocities anyway. Putting our velocity chart on the screen, starting off at 46.8 grains, you'll see we start off at 2724 feet per second. In our max charge of 49 grains, we worked all the way up to 2847 feet per second. We mentioned in the beginning that our Hornady case had a little bit more case capacity. I'll put our last velocity chart that we used the last time we shot this with Norma Brass on the screen. You'll see kind of how we actually duplicated some of the testing we did before as far as velocities were concerned. And this will give you guys a little bit of an idea how adding 8 tenths of a grain of water case volume to a case can actually affect your velocity. One thing I thought was spectacularly interesting in here, if you'll notice on the old chart, between our 46.6 and 46.8 grain chart, we're basically right at that 2745, 2747 feet per second in there. Looks like a very nice velocity plateau in there. But when you're only shooting one round per charge, you always have to wonder if that data is real. Obviously, the plateau down a little further in the 2690 range looks a little bit nicer. But if you can find one a little bit up higher and that actually does match up with an accuracy node, that might be something very interesting to think about. Going back to our actual velocity chart from today, you can see, lo and behold, at our 47.4 grain and 47.8 grain charges, we have a real nice velocity plateau right in there. At 27.52 feet per second, it puts our barrel time somewhere around 1.310 milliseconds, which is supposed to be very close to a barrel node in a 24 inch barrel. Quick load again, still steered us somewhere in the right direction. I'm not really sure we want to put any more powder in this case, so I'm really going to call this the max of what we can hit. And quick load says we're somewhere around 60,000 PSI, which is getting close to the max pressure for this case. We did not hit the velocity that quick load said we might hit today, but like I mentioned, our round count is fairly significant on this rifle, and so we might lose some of that velocity just due to our barrel erosion. Though with a 147 grain bullet, 2850 feet per second is nothing to sneeze at. If we were really looking to hit our next velocity node, Quickload predicts it at 48.7 grains, which we did cover today to hit that 1.226 millisecond node, but that's also supposedly going to come at 2871 feet per second, which if you look at our velocity chart, we didn't meet today. So guys, pressure was really our primary reason for doing this testing, to see if Reloader 26 was a viable option for this. So let's look at the cases real quick. Looking down at 46.8 grains, really don't see anything at all. Very nice rounded primers, not really any primer cratering whatsoever to speak of. Climbing up to 49 grains, still rounded primers, but you're just getting enough primer cratering at this thing that you can run your fingernail over the primer. You'll just notice the slightest bit of primer cratering. Anyway, overall, I guess if I was going to be using Hornady Brass, somewhere in that 47.6 grain load, I think is what I would be going for. Barrel times line up pretty well. With the lower pressure of lower 26, really should have limited barrel erosion and actual reasonable case life. Even if you're not reloading for 6.5 Creedmoor, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, put those in the comment section below. If you like the content and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Turn the bell notification on so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.